Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my allotment. It, it's warm um, here, <laughs> as you could probably tell. It's half past nine in the morning and it's already 24 degrees. If you aren't British, you'll probably be thinking, that's, that's not hot. What, what are you going on about, woman? That's not even hot. Over here, that's, that's hot for half past nine in the morning and it, it's quite hot for, you know, midday as well. The British are not well equipped for extremes of weather because we, we live in a fairly sort of temperate, moderate climate most of the time. And then every now and again, we get a really cold winter or we get a really hot summer or just even like a little hot spell, which is what we've got at the moment. We're in a little mini heat wave and we just find that we can't actually cope with it very well at all. So I've just realised that someone's about to walk past me. I still haven't quite got over the feeling a bit self-conscious talking to camera here, but um, she's a nice lady and she said hello to me earlier. So, And to be honest, people probably know exactly what I'm doing. But yes, so we are not equipped for these extremes of temperature. And I mean that in all seriousness. Our homes are certainly older properties are designed to keep heat in and keep us warm rather than keeping us cool. Very few of our public buildings uh, have, or even pri like private homes, very few of us have any kind of air conditioning whatsoever. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm hiding under a tree at the moment and it's still, still bloody hot. <laughs> uh, what you can see behind me, which I'll show you properly in a minute, is my patch kind of at the back of the allotment that I've just completely left alone. And I have to say, I'm so glad I did because all I can hear behind me at the moment are a load of crickets. And I've been thinking as I sat here, gasping for water. <laughs> I walked for five minutes to get here and I already needed water. But I sat here listening to them thinking, oh, do you know what? Next year they're not gonna be here because I'll have dug that bed, hopefully. So I'm appreciating them while they are here. Okay, so the plan for today is, I've got some key things that I definitely, definitely want to get done. The first of which is I want to start harvesting my potatoes. They're almost ready to dig up anyway. They have now got a touch of the old blight as well. It's, it's kind of coincided with the point at which I was almost ready to dig them up anyway. So that's, that's not too bad. I want to dig up, I think, a couple of plants and hopefully have enough potatoes for a couple of dinners we'll see we'll see how well they've done so harvesting some potatoes and the second thing is i've got some spaghetti marrows and courgettes to plant out and they really need to go out now they're already a bit late so they need to go out and then i've got some optional things to do which is there's some weeding that needs to get done and i've also brought some cardboard with me if it's too hot for me to go and get a barrow load of compost i'm at least going to lay the cardboard down and weight it down with some um stones and rocks and things so that it's ready for next time so yeah that that's that's pretty much what i've got to do first thing we're going to do though is take you on a little tour because it's been a while since you've seen it and uh yeah, there's been some good things and some bad things. So let's go and have a look. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is just on the table in front of me. This is the bad thing. Uh, my onion, or my onions started flowering and going to seed. They also weren't really growing very much anyway. So I pulled these up a couple of days ago and just left them to dry out a bit in the sun. I'll probably take those back with me. You know, I'll eat them, it's fine. And I'll eat the big green stalk flowering stem. I will eat that as well won't waste anything but that was disappointing because I honestly thought I was actually going to be able to grow onions properly this year for the first time. I'm just going to walk you around to the front so we can start at the point that we always start at. Okay so we always start here don't we this is the flower patch that I sowed and it looks so different from the last time that you saw it. It needs a little bit of weeding you can see, let me show you some of my weeds. <laughs> let me show you the weeds first and then the flowers. Um, we've got some weeds mainly at the edges, some docks and dandelions. Some bits of the uh, grass have started to come through. But overall, I'm really, really pleased with this. I've got the random potato growing in the middle, which is a potato that has grown on this plot since I took it over about three years ago. 
the potatoes are the most delicious potatoes in the world. They are so yellow and waxy. And every year I leave one behind, it doesn't seem to mind growing in the exact same patch that it's always grown in. And I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to having them this year. You can see that they are starting to flower. Um, so yeah, we'll keep an eye on those and see what happens. And then you can see that predominantly in this patch is lots and lots of phacelia, which will be fantastic for um, insects and for butterflies and bees and things like that. All the pollinators will love it. And then there's also quite a bit of cosmos and it's actually the healthiest cosmos I think I've ever grown because it's really bushy. And what tends to happen is when I sow it from seed, it goes really leggy. There's also, I think, some cornflowers in here as well. Not very many of those, which is disappointing. And then I also think we've got, and this is the only one I found, is I think we have one zinnia. So again, it's disappointing that there aren't many of those, but I'm glad there's one. <laughs> I'm glad there's one. And yeah, it's definitely cornflower at the back there. So I'm getting covered in ants because look, there's a little, little ant party going on on here for some reason. <laughs> um, there's also the pot marigolds at the end there and I think I spotted a nasturtium. They have just self-sown from last year and well previous years because I've always had pot marigolds and nasturtiums on the plot no matter what. And they're pretty indestructible. And there's a little bit of mint at the edge there. Oh, I saw another ant on my hand. God. Honestly, ants are well, I say they're the bane of my life. I mean, let's face it, there's plenty of those on an allotment plot, but I think because my allotment plot is so dry and there's no shade, they just love it. They just love it. But yes, yeah, so that's the, the flower patch starting to flower. I'm really, really thrilled with it. Let me know what you think. Have you ever grown from a seed mix before? I've never successfully grown from a seed mix before. This is my first one. I will put a link to it in the description box. It's a seed mix from Higgledy Garden, which is an independent nursery, I think in the West Country, I have to double check that. And he basically sows and grows and collects his own seed and then sells it on. Right, let's take a little look at the the path. The path has got a few kind of weeds coming through. Again, I don't think I put the wood chip down particularly thickly. And also there were some pernicious perennial weeds underneath. So I might have to give that a quick weed. All the weeds over this section here, of course, are just up and everywhere. You can see that's the patch at the back with all the grass and everything in it. And I just love it. I just love it. It's got the dandelion flowers with my sunglasses on, <laughs> which are giving it a bit of a filter. It all looks a lovely golden yellow colour, so I'm keeping my sunglasses on for now. The rose bush is absolutely spectacular. It has got a touch of black spot now and uh, a little something else going on and needs a prune. That can go on my list of bonus jobs, but oh my God, that, I just, every time I just look at, I mean, I have to take cuttings from this. Remind me remind me to take cuttings but yeah so this section at the front here that flowered first that all needs pruning back and then we've got this luscious area at the back here which I might take a bunch um, of rose stems back with me now let's have a look at this absolutely spectacular lavender I mean I just I can't believe my luck with some of the things I inherited in this plot I mean the yucca plant the cordyline is flowering in, in spite of me hating it all the time. It will come out. It's not going to come out with the soil as hard and dry as it is now. So we'll leave that as an, to an autumn job now. But look at all of this. And there's also, I'll show you in a minute, there's also another absolutely spectacular lavender bush. Right, so over on this side is uh, the middle no dig bed that I'm trying to create which has not really gone very well because it's all happening in fits and starts. All that's in here at the moment is three runner bean plants that were given to me by another plot holder. You can see I haven't staked them. Every time I'm here I think to myself I need to bring some bean poles next time to do that. Every time I come here I completely forget to do it because you know sometimes I'm a useless article. <laughs> I've also got some rhubarb here which I thought I'd dug out because the only rhubarb or barb I want to keep is, I've lost it now, there's, there's one up here somewhere, probably behind all of that grass now. 
that's the one that I want to keep just at the edge of the plot and kind of out of the way but this one is being persistent so might have to dig that out again later on in the year and then there, I mean there are a few other things I had some leftover beetroot seeds that have been scattered I think there's a, a pea plant there I just chucked a load of seeds in but because I haven't stayed on top of watering this patch properly I like nothing's really come of it I also chucked some seeds in this section as well but not, again nothing's come up because it's not really a deep enough layer as yet and it also dries out really quickly this mushroom compost um so it, it's it's not doing great but we're probably going to plant a marrow in there later on today and we'll kind of see how that goes and then moving over here we have got the potato patch and they have flowered and we're now we're now about two weeks after they flowered actually so it's about the right time that they should be dying off however to me some of this looks like potato blight in combination with the fact that they should be dying back anyway so i think we like i said earlier we might have a little bit of a combo of both going on and what I'm going to do is because I haven't successfully managed to grow anything in this kind of section here, is I'm gonna start pulling up the potatoes from this end. I'm gonna take up that one and that one, this kind of area, which will make a nice square patch that's very hot, sunny, um, and will be great for the courgettes, hopefully. So I'm thinking two or three plants I might manage to get in that gap. And then if I've got time, right, so this this has all gone a, a bit wrong as well. Um, my radishes went to seed and I thought, fantastic, that's great because I really like eating radish seed pods. And then I had been watering the allotment pretty regularly. I was managing to come up every other day, every two days, but then I left, I think it was only like a three day gap. And in that three days of heat, these all just completely dried out and have kicked the bucket so that all needs pulling up this whole patch needs weeding i'm not sure about the state of my cabbages inside i think they've got some kind of aphid so they might have to come up i don't know yet and then these just random peas that i sowed down the edge here are actually looking pretty good so what i might try and do is see if i've got any kind of like twigs or something that i can either bring up or find and actually like treat that crop seriously <laughs> and then the other thing which like this gets my goat this this gets my goat this is what happens in gardening peas that i chucked in not really expecting anything doing great the tomatoes we come around here tomatoes that i chucked in down the side here okay they don't look great they don't look healthy but they're flowering they're gonna produce tomatoes. <laughs> and I just chucked them in as a couple of spares. I mean, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. But there you go, that's gardening. So um, first job to do then is harvest some potatoes. Right, so this is one of the jobs off my list. I have, I think, pretty much weeded this little flower patch here. I've pulled out dandelions, some docks, some cooch grass, a few other things as well that I don't really know what they are oh there's a bee there's another bee how beautiful hi bee and a hoverfly excellent pollinators pollinator city is what i'm growing here um, and also an ant farm as well i feel like i have got an entire allotment of ant farms i've just spotted another another bit of that cooch grass oh gosh um on the subject the weeds that oh my gosh let me just show you the weeds so right um this is why i think it's cooch grass looks like cooch grass to me it has these really long underground creeping roots i mean that's typical of a grass but it's particularly pernicious and annoying i have to say though i was expecting loads more dandelions and docks and things than there actually are in here because if you go back to my first video when i created this flower patch i did put a double layer of cardboard down but it went straight on top of all of these horrible perennial weeds and I'm just shocked that there's not more of them that have come through I think part of it is that this flower mix is kind of quite densely sown and it has covered oh, I can see another bit of that cooch grass it has covered an awful lot of this and it's probably blocked out the light the cardboard's done its thing everything's kind of done its oh, See, unless you oh, bloody ant on my arm 
can't ants just F off for like five minutes? Oh, sorry guys, just a really big one on my arm. <laughs> what I've discovered since being here is I've got red, regular red ants and black ants. I've also got the big fat black ants. And you know what else I discovered? My absolute faves, the flying ant. It's all good, it's all good. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I've just been surprised that not as much of this has come through as I thought. This is coming up at the edge from underneath the cardboard. But yeah, so really bloody happy <laughs> with uh, this patch here. And then, as you will have already seen, because I'm going to put the potato video out first. Um, yeah, this is the state of play with the potatoes. I turned it into a separate video in the end because there's just, there's a lot going on with them. You can see I've got my first pile there. So this is where I've got to with the filming of the potato video, just so you know. First pile there, second pile there, which are the absolute worst, third pile there, which are the best. And then I'm about to film a bit for the potato video here, but my phone keeps overheating. So I have to keep stopping, going and doing a bit of weeding. Ugh. Not what I expected today, but it is warm. There is a breeze though, and also it's not blazing hot sunshine. Can you see, it's quite, it's quite kind of dark and cloudy, so I don't feel like I've got the sun burning into me. So I'm happy to keep going for a bit longer. I wanna finish this, these potatoes in the potato video. I'm gonna to have to kind of do a bit of prep on them before I take them home, make sure I'm not bringing any diseases back into my back garden. Um, and then I'm gonna plant my courgettes and what else have I got, spaghetti marrow into this bed here. Don't think I'm going to get the chance to rescue that section over there, but that can just be, that can be another day. And on that other day, I will bring some bamboo canes with me and sort out my runner beans. I'm sounding aggressive. Um, it's the heat, <laughs> it's the heat and the ants. I felt the urge to just pop back <laughs> and apologise for sounding really stroppy. <laughs> I'm just, there's some potato disappointment in there. There is the frustration of the ants and it is warm. I'm going to go and have some water. And actually, do you know what? I have got, I've got some edible potatoes here and I think I've also discovered a variety that I, I really like and it'll be interesting to see what the pots at home turn out like because that's into fresh compost I think for the most part so hopefully they'll be alright. But yeah, go and get some water. <sighs> sort myself out. Right then, so still very pink, <laughs> I noticed, still very pink. Um, what we're going to do next, or what I'm going to do next, is plant out the courgettes and the marrows. Uh, let me spin you around and show you how everything looks at the moment. Okay, we have the former potato bed. We've got the pile of potatoes that are the, like, the pretty good ones. I've got this little pile here that I'll bag up separately. They'll be the first ones that I eat because I'll be peeling them and cutting out, you know, any chunks of them, bits of them that aren't, aren't that great. So yeah good potatoes bad potatoes <laughs> and then here i've got i did bring some chilies with me just because they haven't really come to anything much this year i've got some out in pots in my back garden again i don't think they're going to come to much but i thought i would try them here because it's very hot and dry and they might like it so i've got a chili uh, along the edge here I've got one two three courgettes at the moment i might put a fourth one in and then cabbage white butterfly who's very interested and could be very disappointed then I've got two spaghetti marrows at the end there I'm going to get those in see how things look and then I think I've got another couple of marrow plants they aren't quite as far along as those ones but I might pop them in and I have got another courgette and another chili which also might go in somewhere but I just don't know where yet so <laughs> watch this space just to show you that this end of the bed, the soil is like desert dust. It's, um, it hasn't been mulched and you can really, really tell the difference between this and what's over there that's had the mushroom compost on top. And this state of affairs where it's just like dry dust, this will be why the flying ants like it so much. Well, this will be why all the ants like it so much. Okay then guys, um, time for a final wrap up. I'll just show you, sorry, it was telling me that I've got low battery now. So conking out because of the heat is telling me I don't have room for my video and now it's telling me I don't have any battery. So I'll be quick. Yeah, I'm gonna do a quick whiz round, recap on what's been done, how everything's looking at the moment, and then we will say our goodbyes. So hold on, don't go yet. 
hold on for like a minute. Okay, so we'll start at this end. The bonus job of weeding this and sorting out the cabbages and stuff did not happen. Over here, we have got one chili plant, four courgettes and two marrows in quite a small space. I do appreciate that. I'm gonna feed them a lot and hope for the best. Oh, I have added a bit more cardboard, ready to extend this bed next time I'm here. I've got two chili plants in a couple of um, leftover spaghetti marrow that didn't look too kind of healthy anyway. The good ones went in here. The not so good ones have just kind of gone in this hodgepodge of stuff but that's done everything's been watered in haven't done the roses that was a bonus job I didn't get round to doing and then I think I've shown you this well this is the back view of the flower patch anyway that's been weeded and watered and Ooh. I'm I'm not doing anything else today there we go so that was exactly one minute um I hope you have enjoyed spending the day with me today at the allotment it's been hot I've now run out of water I can feel the heat getting to me because we've kind of we've hit midday now or thereabouts um it's time to go in time to get some shade get some more water have something to eat and um think about what i'm going to do the next time i'm back here thank you so much for hanging out with me today and i will see you again at the allotment soon